I'm J.R. Church. Welcome to today's analysis of the news. We have an email from uh, Jeffrey, and uh, he says, in regard to the date, September 29th, 2008, you spoke about this date on one of your programs as being the beginning of a seven-year Jewish cycle, a Jewish week. Uh, that may be the beginning of the tribulation period. Well, one of these days there's going to be the beginning of the tribulation period. We don't know that this is it, but yes, it, this year is the first year of a seven-year cycle. But he says, I found it a coincidence that on, the, on that day, the Dow plunged 777 points, a very interesting number. Some call it the perfect number representing the Trinity. However significant the number, it was the date our economy around the world seriously began to collapse. Any thoughts? Well, you know, we heard about this being 777 points. I don't know that there's any spiritual or biblical significance to it being on that particular date, but it is really an interesting number you know for our economy to go down for the stock market to go down 777 points on the new moon of September on Rosh Hashanah the Feast of Trumpets certainly you know it just sounds like God's in complete control of everything now, again we can only notice it is it is interesting maybe not significant we don't know I guess time will tell, however, the further along we get, because we are seeing so many interesting things going on. For example, over this weekend, the 20 uh, nations that met for one purpose, to discuss a world currency, a one world currency. I mean, it looks like they're moving fast. Now, they've got this impetus. They've, they're excited about the possibility that we can have a global a one-world government, and a one-world economic system. And it's coming. By the way, did you know when Barack Obama won the election, uh, the very next day, the um, lottery for Illinois, the state that Mr. Obama is from, the home of Chicago, the state of Illinois lottery, uh, I think it was the three-point pick or whatever they call it, was 666. Again, nothing, nothing beyond interesting, but it just, you know, smacks of uh, something prophetic is going on. So anyway, thank you for that email. I appreciate it. Here's another article we have. And this one says, about the time of the original 13 states adopting their new constitution in 1878, Alexander Tyler, a Scottish history professor at the University of Edinburgh, had this to say about the fall of Athens, or the Athenian government, you know, Greece, 2,000 years ago. Um, he says, quote, A democracy is always temporary in nature. It simply cannot exist as a permanent form of government. He said, a democracy will continue to exist up until the time that voters discover that they can vote themselves generous gifts from the public treasury. Hmm. And he went on to say, from that moment on, the majority always votes for the candidate who promised the most benefits from the public treasury, with the result that every democracy will finally collapse due to loose fiscal policy, which is always followed by a dictatorship. Boy, that sure sounds up to date, doesn't it? He's talking about the fall of Athens and the fall of uh, the Greek Empire. And then he said, the average age of the world's greatest civilizations from the beginning of history has been about 200 years. So a government usually lasts about 200 years, and then there's some big upheaval. He said, during the 200 years, those nations always progress through the following sequence. From bondage to spiritual faith, from spiritual faith to great courage, from courage to liberty, from liberty to abundance, from abundance to complacency, from complacency to apathy, from apathy to dependence, and from dependence back into bondage again. Is that where we're headed? Is that where America is going? 
Professor Joseph Olson of Hamline University, a law, school of law in St. Paul, Minnesota, points out some interesting facts during the 2000 pres presidential election. That's the year 2000. He said the square miles of land in America that was won by Gore was 580,000 square miles of land. That is people living on that much land. Voted for Gore. Bush, 2 million. 427,000 miles, square miles of land. The people living on the voted for Bush. The population of counties won by Gore was 127 million, while Bush, 143 million. So in other words, the population centers went for Gore, and the more rural areas went for Bush. The murder rate per 100,000 residents in counties won by Gore was 13.2. The murder rate per 100,000 residents in counties won by Bush was 2.1. 13.2 to 2.1. In other words, the, the, um, the ghetto areas, the urban areas of the big cities went for Gore. And the law-abiding citizens... Uh, the rest of the country went for Bush. So Professor Olson adds, quote, In aggregate, the map of the territory Bush won was mostly the land owned by tax-paying citizens of this great country. Gore's territory mostly encompassed those citizens living in government-owned tenements and living off various forms of government welfare. End of quote. Olson believes the United States is now somewhere between complacency and apathy. The phase of Professor Tyler's definition of democracy. With some 40% of the nation's population already having reached the governmental dependency phase. 40% of our population is dependent upon government handouts. So he says, if Congressman grants amnesty and citizenship to 20 million criminal invaders called illegals or illegal aliens, they vote and they vote, then we can say goodbye to the USA in fewer than five years. Wow. Is that how long we've got to the end of democracy as we know it, to the end of the United States as we know it? Hey, it may be sooner than that. Remember, last spring, we learned about a closed-door meeting of Congress wherein they discussed the fact that our economy would be destroyed in September, October, November, and by the following January, February, we would be dumping the dollar in favor of a new currency called the Amero. Some even say it's already printed. Isn't it amazing that our nation, which is the leading nation in the world, in which it is said when we get the sniffles, the rest of the world gets pneumonia, financially speaking. We're just about to be destroyed, at least from all that we've heard, our economy. I'm not saying our citizens, but... Folks, we may be very, very close to the tribulation period. So keep looking up. Because we know that when the world goes awry, we know that there will be a rise of a one world government and, and of what the Bible calls the Antichrist. But at the same time, it will be the day of the Lord. His judgment to be poured out upon an unbelieving world. So as Christians, the best thing we can do is get as many people saved as we can. And keep looking up because Jesus is coming to snatch us out one of these days real soon. I'm J.R. Church. See you again tomorrow with our analysis of the news.